Hello, my friends. Nah, I thought I could make him move his mouth. Hey, hey, my friends, how are you doing? It's my Hanneman shirt. I haven't had that on for a long time. <clears throat> so here I am in Damon's kitchen, Nomad kitchen, whatever you want to call it, in my trailer, traveling the wastelands, the desert of the real. Who knows where the trailer is, what dimension, what reality at any time. <clears throat> and this is kind of how and where and whatever that I tattoo, my soul prints, is basically interdimensional travel. So when you're getting your soul print here, you just never know where you're getting it. Done. It could be on this earth, could be another frequency, dimension, plane, you name it. <clears throat> and I have my, my interdimensional cups, my favorite, favorite cups to have coffee or, or whatever in. But mostly coffee. Um, and unfortunately, I had another purple one that I broke. And I've learned uh, to be on the safe side don't, if you push hard on an AeroPress, which I do to get that last little drip out, better not do it on a nice handmade cup. Do it on a, a metal cup like my Yeti ones and then pour it into one of these because that's what happened. I pushed a little too hard and it snapped on the top. So I had to get another one. Uh, and there's my other one. They have teapots done, but I don't know. They're expensive, as I would expect them to be, but <clears throat> the teapots, for that price, I'm, I'm happy to pay the price one day when I'm ready, but I would want one. I'd like to be able to pick amongst a bunch of different ones to choose exactly what I want. But, uh, oh boy, beautiful handmade cups are something else, I must say. So I'm going to put those away. I don't want them risking getting knocked and broken on some light. So I was thinking of cooking my kind of dinner lunch or maybe dinner and what I had earlier was kind of a brunch. It's probably more like it on my way to get gas. So I now have 14 containers of gas 20 and 25 liters um i think i have about four 25 liters and 10 20 liter containers of regular gas and i've now got a bunch of propane tanks all full and golden lake pick wakanigan kokomish i don't know which is the best word to use but that res up there uh i go to a gas station there and it's 139 uh, per liter instead of 159 in many places. Um, so it's worth it if I get enough gas. And if I drive in my little teeny car, fill it up, uh, it's a little bit of a ticking time bomb kind of scenario, as long as I don't smash into someone and I keep a little window open for air. Uh, less gas used and I get more gas. So I've got 14 containers of gas as a backup. I've got loads of dry food. I got sprouting kit. A big one that I put together myself in the fall, haven't used yet. <clears throat> Soon or later, I'll have a wood stove at uh, some point, at least for next year. I'm just thinking of all the things that will cut my costs, will, I can be stocked up on things. Uh, but it feels good. It feels good. And what I'm doing now is I made in my slow cooker that a wonderful client gifted me. I think it was this one or was it the other one? I forget now. But I was gifted a slow cooker with stuff in it. And what I did just yesterday was I made myself some spaghetti sauce. I haven't done that in a long time. Only this time, rather than trying to eat it every day, three meals a day to use it up, I am freezing extra stuff and then using some of it. 
<clears throat> so. So most of you guys know I don't have running water. And I actually find it's not, it wasn't as hard as I thought. Uh, the challenge is to wash dishes with the least amount of water as possible. And I like that exercise slash meditation anyways, because it's amazing the amount of water we waste. And I just wonder how many people would be quick at adapting if they suddenly couldn't. Well, I had to adapt, and at least now I know I can. And in many ways, I, some things I don't even need to go back to. So... <clears throat> Let's see, I am going to get little baggies. Ziplocs, freezer bags, so that I can freeze some of this spaghetti sauce in. And I purposely not put veggies in it because that doesn't freeze well. And I can always put fresh veggies into each load when I Too many things in my hands, because then I end up dropping and dripping, dripping and dropping. Just want to keep the outside edges as clean as possible, and I also got to figure out what kind of size portion would I want. Maybe a little bit more. Let's see. So maybe this will make three meals. Let's see. That's another challenge. Just like for example, oatmeal. I love oatmeal, but I'll tell you it's a real job cleaning the pan after the saucepan when you don't have a lot of water because it's practically glue. Uh, other things clean really easily. For example, <clears throat> started playing around with that sort of faux, P-H-O faux, not F-A-U-X. Not like the Prime Minister, the faux Prime Minister. I'm talking about P-H-O. So, see, I even found a way to slip in the politics. I'm sorry, that was underhanded. That was evil. It was not consensual. Well, I didn't promise I wouldn't. So I didn't break any rules, but still. Okay, so maybe a little bit more into this pouch. One more. There, squeeze all the air out. <clears throat> okay, there's two bags. And then I think I should do one more. This trailer is not as small as some, but it's still it's pretty small. So even when I clean this place up, it's always got too many things, or else I won't have enough to function. So I've just had to get used to lots of little piles of clutter neatly placed there. So like different little workstations. I cannot wait to have a real place uh, so I can start creating, carving, painting, making all kinds of stuff. It's one of the hardest things overall is going for so long without without tattooing, without carving, without painting. It's a challenge. But at the same time, I got so many challenges that uh, it's all good. Seems that the super cold weather is gone. We don't know for sure. 
but now it only seems to go down to about minus 20 instead of minus 36 like it was for a while. That was not fun, and I wasn't fully prepared, and it was... I didn't panic or anything, but it was it was uncomfortable. I will say that. Being pushed up against the edge. Okay. There. Three packs of spaghetti sauce. And then I'm going to just get these little bits off my hand. There. Because now with that done... See, I have to move things to do anything here. Move something off of somewhere to put something else somewhere else. Okay, so I've got flame. I want to clean this uh, crock pot, slow cooker, because it's using up a lot of space here. And then when I get that out the way, I can make my faux meal. So, but while I'm doing that, let's get rid of these, put them in the freezer. Luckily, my freezer's been working lately. That's been a stressor as well. When your freezer isn't working, your heater isn't working, and your stove sometimes isn't working, like not enough flame to roast coffee, that kind of thing. When things are not working fully, it can be quite uh, an ongoing stress that uh, all winter I've basically had to deal with. But it's all builds character, and women, you aren't going to like this, but they say it puts hair on your chest. I personally haven't grown extra hair, so maybe it makes your hair on your chest go gray. Who knows? But I haven't noticed it put more on. I just noticed a little mark here and I thought, oh my god, what if the camera picks up that mark? There. How's that? There. So I'm just heating up some water here. I've learned over time to not throw out water. Unless it's really dirty. This is not drinking water. I used it for something else, poured it in here, and I will use it to heat up and pour in. Um, I should show you. To my messy crock pot bowl there. Rather than use fresh drinking water, another option I do the dog food is what often I'll melt snow if it looks clean enough. <clears throat> There's three spaghetti sauce meals. Oh, another thing I found is for doing pho, uh, the noodles. There's so many different noodles and egg noodles and various things. And what I found, I'll pull this out. So I have options and they look very similar. Like, for example, this one here is German egg noodles in many different forms. And I've chosen these ones because the ingredients are oh, yeah, durum wheat, semolina, and eggs. That's it wheat and eggs. Same with the other German one. But then you get the Chinese one. And it has kind of sort of taste similar. And I'm sure you've already guessed. There's a ton of ingredients that you kind of wonder why each of those extra ingredients need to even be in there. Pull this off. Enriched wheat, flour, palm oil, liquid whole eggs, egg yolk, egg white, lysome, uh, water, salt, beta carotene, cornstarch, sodium bicarbonate. Just a whole bunch of things that, like, why does it need to be in there? So, now that I've educated myself on what is very close to the same. These German egg noodles, just egg, 
and flour. So that's what I'm choosing. Now I'm going to pour this in here and do my best to get that scrubbed out. And I, had, I bought this little scrubby thing that's meant for scrubbing out my cast iron frying pan and it works very well. Um, but I don't fully remember oh, my, my good coffee from my wonderful friend Erica. Green beans, of course. And now, where did I put that little... Oh, uh, this one's a scraper too, so that one will work. Okay. I think it'll work for this as well. Yeah, just finding tools that do things better. Because efficiency is definitely important, saves time, efficient on time and efficient on cost of materials. Anything I can save that much better because the longer I can survive and I got dogs to feed and Elise eats two pounds a day of meat, raw meat, and Tori eats three pounds, so it's five pounds a day I have to give them non-stop. That's a challenge when there's no money coming in. And it's always a little bit of a stressor for me, just that worrying or trying not to worry, but at the same time, trying to think of all possibilities to have some kind of emergency backup plan in case suddenly affordable dog food is no longer available or something. It's a, it's a scary thing. But anyways, it's I'm prepped up as much as I can with so many things. As I mentioned with gas and propane and wood, dog food. Wow. Well, this little scraper thing is working well. Let's see if I can get all of this out of here. But yeah, this, that's my challenge with washing dishes in a very small place with no running water and quite often compromised propane flow. There. So, so, there. Got my spaghetti sauce out of the way, more or less, so that then I can make my meal of the day. I'll have spaghetti tomorrow. And, uh, and I also have to feed the dogs and give Tor his medication. So what I do, because if I feed him first, he may not want to eat the little bit of food with medication in it. So I always let him get nice and hungry and then feed him the medication first. What do I do with that little, oh, here it is, scrapey sponge thing. Yeah, so I'll give him food when he's really hungry, like a piece of liver, with his medication, his antibiotics in it. And then I'll give him his main meal. But it's part of the challenge is making sure that the pills don't fall out. And of course, they're white and the snow is white. So if a pill flew out and hit the ground, I wouldn't see it very easily. So... I'm also working on little tricks to be sure. Because uh, Tor is the kind of dog, as many people have dogs like this, that they can tell if a pill is in their food and they can single it out. And quite often do. So I'm always having to play this little trick with him so that he doesn't. Okay. There we go. What can I pour this into? I guess I could just pour it back in here. Okay. That's what I'll do. Just take this out, swish it around, pour it in there. 
now I will have to use a small amount of drinking water. Very small. Swish it around. It's, it's the bits. Getting all the bits out without using too much to get them out. So this is sort of like the gray water wash, you might say. And then there'll be a kind of a rinse. There. So I don't, I'm at a, a loss for words. I mean, I could talk about my thoughts, but then maybe people wouldn't want to listen. Only a few. So maybe I won't do that. I mean, clearly I have thoughts. Everyone has thoughts, but do we need to share them? Depends on the topic. So I might leave that. I'm kind of tired of my thoughts anyways. It's been quite a, an intense time, I'm sure, for everyone. I am sure for everyone. No matter what their beliefs and feelings are. Oh, I know what I could talk about is, uh, are my plans for Nomad Village Retreat Center, Healing Center, art therapy based healing, for uh, just an easy way of describing it. Uh, but its plans are still in action. They're getting refined and perfected. Building a team of healers, networking, uh, and this summer working on creating the environment, which will be ongoing, of course, but I want a beautiful healing environment for people to come and stay while they're doing a workshop or not doing a workshop just hanging out renting a, a cabin I want the cabins to have oh, it's messy I like the cabins to have wood stoves in them or at least a couple of cabins eventually with wood stoves out in the bush, you know, so if someone gets lost, they could just run into a cabin and get warm. It's a safety thing. That's my official reason. There. Wow. Brand spanking new. So there I have a nicely cleaned pot, which I really know where to put it, so I'm going to stick it under the kitchen table for now okay oh <gasps> but yeah the plans for our space here are phenomenal as they unfold i it just excites me so much thinking about what we are able to achieve and i know it's all going to work out better than I even imagined. And part of that knowing is knowing that Raven's got my back. Ooh, this is messy. And is achieving way more than I could ever achieve in the physical from that end. And who knows what energies, whose energies she's working with. I mean, can only guess. There. Oh, okay. So I cut up vegetables yesterday for my foe. So I have um, bok choy and asparagus already uh, soaked, rinsed in uh, apple cider vinegar and rinsed off. So I've got that there. I cooked up in garlic uh, and homegrown garlic little 
puny, um, whatever you call them. And scallops, sorry. And uh, so they're ready. That's ready, chopped up. I have my. This is what what I like about the faux is it's just so easy to whip up. So I put my pan there. Where did I put the faux? Oh, drinking stuff. Now this is a president's choice faux. I. I think I looked at the ingredients to make sure it wasn't too crazy. Beef stock, sea salt, ginger, dried onion, onion juice, anchovy paste, spices, just normal spices, cardamom, anise, anise cinnamon, dried yeast, beef gelatin, beef fat, yeast extract, caramel color. So pretty good. All I need to do is choose my amount. So yeah, I like the faux idea, especially because it gets me drinking more liquids. And it's easy to clean up compared to oatmeal. Because it doesn't glue itself. Maybe a little bit more. Nice thing as well with this is whatever I leave, I can have for breakfast in the morning. So I like that a lot. Maybe a bit more. I'm trying to imagine it's about half. There. So get that nice toasty hot. German noodles. Egg noodles. Spitzel. Spitzel. I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it. Sounds good to me. Now, how many minutes do I cook it? Cooking time, 13 minutes. Okay. That's roughly the same. Sort of. Sort of, kind of. Um, oh, I was searching through the barn. Completely forgot, as I'm getting slowly reducing down lower and lower on my green coffee beans, and I found a backup bag unopened of... Kona, Hawaiian Kona coffee, green. Oh, what a nice stock up thing I did and then forgot and then remembered when I found it. Oh, that makes me happy. <clears throat> That's one of the nice things about my short-term memory loss that's largely come back. It's still coming back, but... Uh, I get little gifts that I find that I had been on top of and then got distracted and forgot. So like the coffee, sometimes I get a nice little surprise. I'm still hoping this spring some money that I lost in an envelope in the barn. I, I'm pretty sure I'll find it because I only misplaced it because it's so damn dark in there. And it had a little flashlight, and it was just way too easy to lose. So. But, you know, I've got this plan for my house when I build it, or have it built, whatever, take part in it anyways. I want to be very, uh, very much a part of the design and build concept of my house. But I want my place to be sacred. I don't want it to be average and bland. Uh, don't want it to be the new normal house. Uh, I want, I want to play with imagination, childlike fantasy type concepts. I, I look back and I think, what are the things that 
bring magic into my life. And it's like, well, when you're a child, storybooks, like you, you go off into your imagination when someone, you know, you're a little kid and someone reads you a storybook. And I want to harness an aspect of that. And that's why I think creativity is so important uh, and creating an environment that lets your mind soar, imagination soar. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna... Yeah, I want to create an environment that just the environment alone will help people heal. There is so much healing that's needed in the next, well, there's no limit to how long. Uh, healing doesn't happen that quick, emotional healing. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about the emotional stuff. Sorry, I should clarify. Okay, hold on. The German, whatever it's called, Spätzl. thrown in there and uh, oh here it is nice soon got my greens I'll wait 15 minutes just may be a bit too long for those and then I've got my little guys here garlic so good noodles in these are going in a few minutes and then that goes in, in a few minutes this is definitely not needing to be so high but yeah I want to uh, I want to create a fantasy village and I feel that what by engaging the imagination with uh, a very strong intent and uh, love activation in the heart, which I always, that's an important ingredient of my soul prints. I think by taking all these elements, uh, like mortar for bricks, uh, create the environment that'll be ongoing, of course, but just the energy of the place will help people heal alone without any interaction at all. And then doing a workshop here or having your soul print done or whatever, everything will be regenerative. Everything will be healing. Uh, community building, um, instructional, many workshops will be to learn things for people that are adapting to wasting less, uh, getting prepared, depending on what they're getting prepared for. Uh, could be a workshop on building a tiny home or something like I, there's really no limit to what we could be offering and networking with. So. I'm very excited about, oh, I can smell the anise. Let me throw those guys in now. One last little thingy there. And next will be those guys. But yeah, I... I'm so excited about creating this community and um, it's going to be a very intelligently put together, well thought out. Uh, I'd rather it develop slowly and beautifully than uh, just some haphazard thing that doesn't end up continuing. So it, this is going to be a very serious effort. And uh, I think it'll be an environment that people will like. We used to have woofers at the other place. Now, this I, if I was a woofer, I'd rather be coming down to this than what we were doing before. Uh, just because we're creating a, a, a village. We're creating an environment. We're engaging our imaginations, our hearts. There's a, a massive heart activation uh, learning curve for people. So, uh, you know, young people who want to do the work experience on organic farms, that's what the woofer stands for, for those that don't know. Uh, I think this would be a great environment to throw yourself into. I wanna really work on uh, as many non-electric uh, elements pulled in uh, just for saving and not wasting so much electricity as well. It's the same thing, not wasting water. Not There's a lot of things that I want to incorporate intelligently 
Oh, and I, I'm hoping this summer to build with a bunch of friends a wood-fired, outdoor wood-fired sauna. Let's try to get as much of these veggies under the water so they all cook. There we go. Yeah, I'd like to have a wood-fired sauna up this year. It would be very nice. It's a big project, but... Not as big as the house. <clears throat> um, clear some brush. Clean up some of the brush that's already down from years ago. Uh, clean up, collect, cut up bits that's fallen uh, for firewood before it rots. Uh, clean up the trails if we have time to add to that. Because uh, doing all that moving makes a mess. And then we have to clean it all up again. Um... Oh my gosh, I, I just imagine a world that when you step into it, you you truly are disengaged from this world. You know, the mon mundanity, is there such a word as mundanity? The mundanity is, if not, I created it. Seeing Trudeau can redefine words, I'm going to create my own too. So the mundanity, uh, stepping out of the mundane and into the uh, that which activates the heart and imagination and wonderment. You know, collects, collects, connects people to their heart, their core essence. Because I really think that a lot of the trauma we're going through and have gone through and will go through, uh, it disconnects, right? Because you're in survival. And people quite often, I think, a lot of this kind of call it slave mentality and that's not pointing fingers it's not judging i think it manifests out of trauma you know you get traumatized over and over and over again small levels bigger levels repeated it's like the repeated the head blows for football players they realize later that it doesn't take one big blow you can have many little blows so same thing with trauma there be lots of little ongoing bits of trauma uh, but either way Trauma is a large ingredient used for brainwashing people. And I, I used to study when I was a teenager the whole Mooney thing. And I, I envisioned that when I got older, I would be a, a deprogrammer and be able to help save people from being programmed into the Moonies and stuff. That was just my little world then. Uh, I never ever did it, but I did study a lot about it when I was young. Uh, and I have... Also gone to hypnotists for therapy when I was trying to clear up uh, and sort out my childhood abuse from my father. And what I found out was I, among a few, are not able to be hypnotized. And that really frustrated me and annoyed me also because I still spent just as much money on this hypnotherapist, Adam Crabtree. I remember him now. He wrote a book at that time called Trance Zero. Trance Zero, if anyone's curious. But that's who I went to see in Toronto. And he couldn't hypnotize me. And he told me that there are a handful of people that just cannot be hypnotized. And it's kind of interesting. It makes me think of uh, Raven's, one of her family members. Uh way way back so when they were much younger um was that one of those hypnotist shows where they will choose someone a volunteer from the crowd and they'll hypnotize them into thinking they lost something and they'll be running around all over the place looking for, under chairs and things so uh he got hypnotized and he was running around frantic according to raven um uh, and they said, well, what are you looking for? And he said, my penis. And he's going, it's, it's like this long. Oh. And he was so serious about it. And I remember thinking, how is it that they can literally lose any fear about what the crowd thinks? They don't see that they look funny. 
uh, until they, they're snapped out of it. And then they go, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. But how are they not aware? But yet they're interacting with this world kind of still. Um, that's hard to say. I don't know what all that is. But one thing I can say is going through all of this, all of us, no matter where you are, what you feel, what you think, we stand the chance to, to learn a massive amount about ourselves and each other and how we work, at least to a next level. Far from knowing everything, but we will learn quite a bit. I think my noodles might be almost 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 el dante but just a bit too much of a crunch but just i could probably just leave it yeah so there's my foe oh yeah now i'm excited because i'm gonna eat and i made a good meal and that is sweet will not try any wrapper that's for sure tours antibiotics which i should maybe pull out before i forget one and a half pills twice a day put those where i can't lose them Okay, I probably should feed my dogs, then come back and eat that. So thank you folks, any of you guys that hung out for the whole video. It's 42 minutes, so, or maybe you might have fast forwarded through it or something. Doesn't matter either way, I'm just blabbing on. Part of this is my diary as well, uh, even if no one ever looked at it, and it's just something that I can go back to look through 20 years from now, assuming I'm living to 80 but uh yeah so a lot of it is is also for that it's something i can go back and look through and not lose things so i kind of use it as a a yearbook photo album scrapbook journal but anyways i'm gonna run off uh and put together my dog food i i also look for chicken on sale and when it reaches enough of a deal where basically let's see let me just put this on the scale so that is almost three pounds and it's 461 $4.61. When it's that inexpensive, where I can basically feed each one of them, this one here, 138 a kilogram. Yeah, this is 1.4 kilogram. Almost the same. So when it's that cheap, and I can basically feed them for about $5 each, I buy a whole bunch of chicken and freeze it because it's a good backup also the beef primarily beef ground up that i get from quebec means i need to drive out there a little bit less often and also right now with all the craziness going around i, I also concerned that i might drive all the way down to the border of quebec and find out that they don't let me cross or something you know so it, i just the less i have to go over there uh, the happier I am. So I collect chicken for, and freeze it. It's a good backup. I'm learning to be more and more and more prepared, you know, with my, my gas, my propane, my wood, my food, various things. And I'm learning as I go. But it's good. And there's something very satisfying about simplifying and basically designing your life, designing the way you're going to live rather than just 
doing it the way it's always been done or the way, you know, the, the difference is, oh, well, I'll try a different apartment or I'll have a loft apartment instead of a whatever apartment or will I buy instead of rent or do I lease? But it's always the same. And frankly, most people that build, in my opinion, they just build in the same thing. Just that they get to design the shape and form. Uh, but I like to do something really different. Create a different... I want a building to change my state of mind as I walk through the doorway into it. I want to play... I want to pay close attention to that aspect of how a building makes me feel when I walk into it and when I'm in there. But we'll see. Anyways, that's enough. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.